Okay, so the goal for this class is to give you an introduction to prototyping in general, and this introduction <coughs> will be true for the low level prototyping, but also for the medium fidelity prototype and the high fidelity prototype. So it's a general introduction to prototyping. And then today we're going to also talk, or today and tomorrow, we are going to also talk a little bit, well, not a little bit, we're going to talk about low fidelity prototypes and medium fidelity and high fidelity instead will be covered closer to the assignments that will 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 need those concepts. Hmm? So today introduction to prototyping and the low fidelity prototypes, but before we have two user interfaces for the Hall of Fame or Shame. So can you guess what, what these are? These are pictures I made, so I know the full story here. Any opinion on what these things are? Number of floors, yeah, but what's the purpose of the number of floors? Just, oh, nice, I have 26 floors, and that's it. What's the purpose of these things? These are two screens on the same interface. Any idea? You can select the floor. Sorry? Same device, yes. You can select the floor. You can see where the floor is. Yes, more or less. So this is um, the elevator control of an hotel in New York City. So you go in, in the elevator, you don't have buttons in the elevator, but you have a button outside of the elevator. So this works in this way. When you are um, at the ground floor, you have a key, and you tap the key on this device, so this screen is totally useless on the ground floor. You tap the key on the device, and it will tell, tell you, use elevator PA5. So there are like seven elevators, and the system will, will tell you which elevator to use. Hmm? So elevator one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So according to the floor you have to go, you have assigned an elevator for the system, so everybody that needs to go to that floor or close floor will go through some algorithm to the same elevator. When you are at a different floor, let's say your own floor, in my case was 17 floor, that was why it's, it's grayed out. Um, you instead don't, don't use the key to, to select an elevator, but you press the number of the floor you want to go. So if I'm on 17th floor, I want to go to the lobby, I press L, and then again, the screen will tell me which elevator I need to use. In this example is elevator PE5. So one of the seven or so elevator that are there. Hmm? So this is how the elevator system work with these two screens. Uh, so now that you know the purpose, um, looking at the screen, which are the positives and the negatives of these two user interfaces. Yes. Uh, there are. That's a good, a good question. Let's ask my memory to work more than expected. Uh, it was not recent. Uh, I think it was 2021 or 2022. Uh, so I need to remember. I think there was a couple of them for each floor. So like seven elevators, two of them, okay. in an hotel. Yes, they are close to the elevator. Like there is a device and then 
the seven elevator on the um, let's say on the right of the device. Yes, all of shame, a little bit. Uh, other, other things. I was wondering, what is the size of the screen? Uh, like a smartphone? No, it's bigger. Oh. It's bigger than a smartphone. Is I don't know, bigger than a smartphone, smaller than a tablet. It's something in the middle. So you can press. So let's say that each number are more or less big as a finger, more or less. Yes, any, let's say, pros and cons about the device themselves. So let's say that we are the ground floor, the lobby. Um, so the lobby, which, are, which is the problem of this thing, that you don't use the entire screen because it's all locked. It only works with a key. So it's basically a touch screen that you don't touch because you just put the key like here there is an RFID symbol and then it tells you use elevator whatever so that's of course a, a waste of space for the the lobby um, what else instead in a in a floor you have all the buttons there Yeah, it's not very easy to, to, to find the right floor the first time. So actually, um, so I, I agree that it's more probably all of, of shame than fame. Uh, when you go into this hotel at the lobby, they need to explain you how to use the elevator. That's already a, a bad sign, right? You go there, there is a key. Oh, to get the elevator, you have to do this stuff. And because the, on the, on the ground level, you have a behavior and then in the in the other um, floor you have another behavior so that's clearly not not optimal and and what if I am at the ground floor and need to go so let's say that I'm 17th floor and I have a friend of mine at the 11th how can I go to the 11th floor from the lobby I first need to go to my floor, go out of the elevator because there are no buttons in the elevators. I cannot um, do anything in the elevator. You go in the elevator, you trust that the elevator brings you to the right place. Then you go out of the elevator and then at that point you can press, let's say, 11. Yeah, so again, not really uh, optimal. And then looking at the screens, what you can also can say. This is not a prototype. This is actually a commercial working system. Oh, it's black and white. Yes, it's grayscale black and white. This is a picture also, so it's maybe, but yeah, it was quite similar to, to the real one. Uh, and it's black and white, grayscale, so, or blue scale, whatever, but it's not color. Another thing, I think you can notice another thing. doesn't use the full screen so it's like a waste of space here and here where you need to and then you can you could have organized buttons differently be a little bit larger etc and and here this is a huge waste of space this is just say pa5 basically and use elevator small uh that was like what is pa5 and then again what is pa5 which is pa5 of the elevators is the first one is the last one. So first time in hotel, you see there is a series of elevators close to this and PA5, go to PE5. What is PE5? Is the first one, is the fifth one, or 
I need to count the mini elevators I have to go there. Hmm? And so that's another thing. There is no direct mapping between the information on the screen and the information in the real world. That is one design principle we met last week, by the way. Hmm? So the mapping between the user mental model and, and, the, actual si and the actual system in operation. Um, okay, so in the end, all of fame or all of shame? More shame, okay. Maybe not the top one, but still not in the very good things. Um, good, so let's talk about uh, prototyping now. So this is more or less the process we, we did so far. We started from a domain and select target user, the context, etc. We talk about, and you did, some need finding uh, to extract which are the user needs. And then we start talking last week, uh, yes, or two weeks ago, on how to satisfy those needs. And we talk about sketches, storyboard, as a way to present the synthesis of the outcome of these needs. And today we're going to talk about paper prototypes as a way to still do something to satisfy those needs. And interactive prototypes are the other kind of prototype. And WOZ, do you know what is WOZ? I don't think you know, but I'm asking. Do you know what it is? WOZ? Hello, there it's 5.49 uh, in the evening. Yes or no? Thank you. Um, it was time to wake up a little bit. Um, if I told you that there are the initial of a old, well, old movie and also redone more recently and a book, does it help? Yeah, say that, I don't know who. Wizard of Oz, actually, yes. We will see the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz is actually a technique for prototyping and faking systems uh, that takes the name from the book and the movie of the Wizard of Oz. So how many of you have seen the Wizard of Oz or read the book? Okay, the others have some month to get on pace with the the brief story, you don't need to, to watch the entire movie, but you need to, do, to know who is the Wizard of Oz and what it was doing in the movie slash uh, book so that you will be prepared for, for that and I'm not going to, to explain it, uh, the story, because you will know already. So, goal of prototyping. Prototyping as a series of goals. Uh, the main one is, of course, envisioning, making idea visible, making ideas actual, mm, useful, and practical. Mm. So prototyping is very good, is demonstrated to be a very good tool for generating new ideas in a quick way, evaluating new ideas, because it's easy to share a prototype in the final product, and also to testing new idea with people, other people, your target population, for instance. And again, we are talking about prototyping in general now, not just low fidelity prototype. And according to the stage of the design we are, early or advanced or more close to the final product and intending the audience, it's other designers, it's other creator, our other developer, is the client, is the manager is the users, your target population, etc. you can have a different set of tools and technique to use. We already said, for instance, that for low fidelity prototype, one common way is to do paper prototype. But that is very good for the early stage of design and for some of the intended user, like other designers, for instance, other creators, for instance. Um, there is one error to avoid, um, that we, in a way, force you not to do, that is focusing on the user interface before focusing on the task that the user 
as to accomplish with the prototype. Mm? And we are forcing you to have three tasks uh, before start to design the paper prototype and then to design the prototype on those three tasks. So you put the task first by, let's say, design in this course. But if you don't have a, a, a fixed structure like, like we have, then it's an error to avoid. Sometimes you start focusing on the user interface and then after you, you think, well, but what, what's the purpose of this? Which are the actual tasks that the person needed to do with my prototype? Um, so prototyping, as I mentioned at the beginning of the course, is actually a series of techniques to explore different design alternatives and in a quicker way. So, it's actually demonstrated that if you do several rounds of prototyping before realizing a final product, be it in code, be it a, be it a physical item, etc., the time you dedicate at the beginning is all time that in most cases is wasted if you instead do directly the final product. You go in with writing code, you go in with building stuff, and then after you maybe dis so, um, discover that something is not valid, something is not correct, and you need to go back and fix it. But going back from the final product is very, very different than going back from, let's say, piece of paper done on a pencil, with a pencil. So the time needed for doing that is actually uh, is dedicating more time before to avoid the wasting time after. And this is demonstrated in multiple uh, places in theory, but also in practice from industry uh, practice. Um, so a prototype allows us to explore flows of action, devices and the roles, as well as user interface in general. And with prototype, we want to explore more than one possible design, especially early in the design stage, uh, because we know that with the user interface, it's impossible to get it right, perfectly right, the first time. That's why we iterate on prototypes. And our goal is to find the best possible solution among the different alternatives and the different pages and screen that we are going to do with prototyping. And for prototyping, so sketches is, of course, one, one thing that we, we already mentioned when we talk about storyboard, and this is part of some uh, low fidelity prototype. Uh, another technique to prototyping is, or to reflect on prototyping are maps that I don't, f yes, there are, um, that we just cover briefly. And prototypes could be a different level and kind, so we mentioned already the low fidelity, medium fidelity, and high fidelity prototype, and it will tell you what means fidelity, but there is also something in the middle that could be done with medium fidelity, low fidelity, etc., that is the video prototype. Hmm? So it's not something you interact with, but you see in a video. Um, and so one thing that is related to prototyping is actually maps. Maps uh, are a high-level flow view of the major structure of an interface, of a um, software, an application, and focus on how people move through the entire application and without showing the detail of the content, but only the organization of the content and the relationship in a hierarchical way, if needed. And it's related to the information architecture of the application. So where the information stay and how it's structured along the application. So one example of map is the sitemap website. That's the one classical example of a map. And you can also have a map in, a, in other ways like this uh, old style mobile phone menus or if you have a cordless phone at home, uh, cordless phone typically use the same mechanism. So it doesn't show you which is the content of the, pa the pages of the menu voice, but show you how to reach one page, one piece of information from another one. So for instance, for a website, you have the index, the home page, and you know from this that from the index, you can reach any other of these pages plus the search result. 
and then from the search results you can either stay in the search results for instance by um, uh, uh, seeing a new page in the search results if it's a paginated search results or you can go in a single page from the search results or from the index you can go to the intro page and then from the intro page you can go again to the index and so this show all the possible path in which a person can use the website with it doesn't say what he is in the blog page how many blog posts are there which is the topic of the blog post it doesn't say that looking at the map you can just understand that this is probably something around travel something around tour and something like that hmm? from the name and similar the phone menu why the phone menu is circular here why is circular here so here I say that there is internet and then there is networks up service and then phone book and then messages and then calls and then setting and then office and the connectivity and then games and then there is a loop which how do you realize the loop in a user interface of a phone with a wheel or the, the, a, any any one of you has a cordless phone at home like the phone yes how the cordless phone work the menu of the cordless phone work you continue so you go into the menu and then you have item one and then uh, left arrow um, item two left arrow item three and then at a certain point you go back to item one so you are in a loop until you press exit and go out of the menu mm -hmm. so this is again a map that show how you you can reach one position in a user interface to another position in the same user interface like with different pages so these are example of maps way that show the flow between pages and how to reach them mm -hmm. so for instance uh, one could say in a site map that a page is only reachable from another page but not from others so in this case all these pages are reachable from the index and the index is reachable from every of this page but for instance a specific search result um, is not reachable from no it is uh, could be let's say if we remove this are this part here we could say that the information the, the search results are not reachable anymore if we just delete this small segment here it show how you navigate in the page of any application it could be a website it could be a mobile phone uh, etc hmm? so this is really briefly about maps our representation of maps how you navigate the um, the space in a user interface prototypes uh, here we are two definition of prototypes a prototype is a concrete but partial representation or implementation of a system design and not is concrete so it should be realistic should be something you can use and also not partial because if it's not partial that would be the final product so there is no no scope in a prototype and another definition say that is an easily modified and extensible model whatever it is model representation simulation or demonstration of a planned software system etc Mm. but again other two attributes easily modified and extensible so if it's not easily modified if it's not partial if it's not extensible then it's not a prototype in a sense and then say that is one of the most powerful tool for design exploration visualization and testing I already said that and let us see and feel interactivity in either a simulated or real case it depends on the kind of the prototype Um, so this is a prototype do you know what is this so this is a prototype of the real object the real product that is the one on this one the black one so let's start from the black one do you know what is this one 
He is this ancient technology. It's a pal yes, it's a palmare in Italian. Uh, this is a palm, um, and, and uh, uh, let's say precursor of smartphones and tablets in a way. Uh, how did it work? Just looking at it, how did it work? What can you do with this thing? Sorry? Yeah, write something, either with the pen, um, writing here in the space, or with the buttons, and there is a keyboard, and it's for organizing time. So there is a calendar, there was a calendar, emails, messaging, a simple text editor, is for managing information on the go. Mm? And the Palm Pilot of the uh, US Robotics was one of the main product in this category, as most uh, famous product in these categories. Uh, and this is the product. But here's before the product, people did this. What is this? Yes, it's a prototype. Of made in which in which made is that electronic no what is is paper on the top and and not plastic wood something simpler than plastic in this way wood they the creator of the palm pilot cut a piece of wood and then print two pages, well, one page of the, or multiple pages of the potential user interface of this device in black and white. And they also have a pen here. Here there is a pen, there's another stick of wood. And so you can see how this device is in which sense you can see how the device is sorry keeping in your hands and what you discover keeping in your hands size then weight then the button arrangements and if you see the button arrangement changed from the prototype to the to the final version then grip. sorry grip. the grip and how people try use this prototype according to you it was like there on the table and someone just used it for like five minutes or or that is something more extreme? Yes, basically what this person, what these people did with the, this prototype was carrying it around like the real thing. So every time they needed to write something in an agenda, in the calendar, they pick the fake device, use the pen and try to make the thing like in the real product. This was, this seemed quite bizarre at least because you are going around with a piece of wood and making fake notes on it. But that gave an uh, idea on the size of the button, on the disposition of the button, on the weight of the object, on the form size of the object. And which is the positive thing of having it on a paper proto on a prototype. So let's say that is too big. What you can do if it's, this is too big? You make it smaller. You just cut a pieces of wood from here and it's smaller. In like one minute, it's smaller. Now, this w was went on for month before arriving at this. So what's the problem? So this was a new product. 
So it so was something that was not on the market before, a new category of product. So they needed to get it right at the beginning or the best the, or the possibilities. So what's, uh, what would have happened if I said, say, well, I want this, this size, this weight, and let's do directly in production. Once I, product, I, I do the first one, the first real one, um, and then I notice that it's too big. What I should do instead here at this stage? Restart from scratch. And, but realizing this is probably, I don't know, five euro, the piece of wood, some glue, some papers, a printer is quick gives the idea and tells you a lot of things. Clearly cannot tell you the interactivity, the response time of the user interface, cannot tell you everything, but some things can tell you. If they instead skip the prototyping, went already on production, and then something was significantly wrong, they would have spent five euro to do this, or five dollars since they were in the US, probably a little bit more, because this was real, so it was battery, it was electronic circuit, it was software implemented, there was packaging design, there was certification for power consumption done. It was a lot of things happening. And so if at this stage you realize, well, it should have been one centimeter smaller, then you probably get your thousands or thousands of dollars you spent and say, again, let's spend them again. So this is, for hardware device, prototyping is really fundamental. And IDEO, that we already mentioned in the assignment one, but it's also mentioned here, is one company that actually do a lot of prototypes. And for hardware prototypes, it's very, very useful for interactive hardware prototypes to understand how things are, how they behave, etc. cetera. And, and of course, it is a very low fidelity prototype. Why is it low fidelity? Why well, can say that it is a low fidelity prototype? You cannot, interact you cannot interact with it. You cannot use it completely or even at all because it's a piece of paper. You cannot probably not even change it. Uh, but you can learn, as we said, a lot of things like the weight, the size, the dimension of the pen, the pencil, etc. And and this small, quick in a way, uh, iteration of a prototype have then reduce time to market for the actual device. It help reduce cost, help uh, have help to uh, refine requirements, like in terms of weight, in terms of which is the maximum weight that this thing should have. Well, I can cut different pieces of wood, different weight to give to people and say carry it with them all day long for a week and then tell me if it was comfortable or not. And then if it was not comfortable, then that's the weight for that specific device. It should be lighter than that. Hmm? So this, pro and then here if you click on this link, there is the f a longer story, etc. But the main purpose of this was Prototype things helped them to build one device that was a success in that moment uh, in history uh, with, the, say, the best capabilities and characteristics and best requirements they can have. And this was especially true because this was a new device, something that didn't exist before. There was the idea, but there was not specific requirement. There were opinions. In my opinion, it should be like this, and in my opinion, should be larger, smaller, etc. But they were grounded on personal opinion or personal experience, not on facts. Uh, was in a sense what the client or the manager or the boss wanted, not necessarily what actually was needed, or helpful or uh, usable by the actual people that need to buy this thing. So, for hardware devices, of course, more, more significant the difference. For software, it's a little bit easier, but the same thing applies. 
if you realize something in software and then recognize one month later that you should have done things differently in the first page of the application, then it's maybe one week that you waste or more. Mm? It depends on which stage you are. And if you release it to people, then it's also a matter of in success and negative feedback and negative opinion on you as a developer, on the company, etc. Mm? So there is also a other aspects and not just timing in development that impact especially if you then want to sell something or release something to the public mm? and all of these are again demonstrated is demonstrated that all of these can be significantly reduced with prototyping mm? and with user-centered design in general but with prototyping in particular mm? so prototypes facilitate conversation about a lot of things and it depends on the level of uh, fidelity and and obviously higher fidelity will also require much timer mm? so for instance uh, storyboard we already met storyboard storyboard facilitate conversation about tasks we already said that low fidelity prototype facilitate a conversation about user interaction you will not learn with low fidelity prototype about visual design colors small details that's not something that a low fidelity prototype will tell you or will help you to understand but user interaction the main essential thing the main layout of the application yes that is something low fidelity prototype will will help you uh, medium fidelity prototype will add visual design details on top of it and high fidelity prototype will help you give usability details on top of everything else mm -hmm. so every prototype facilitate conversation help you learn something different and you see the fidelity as higher is the fidelity so the realism in once in some sense for the prototype the more time you need to do it so low fidelity prototype is indeed low realism and it also requires not a lot of time to do it so if you make it terribly wrong a user interaction with low fidelity prototype you can easily you didn't waste much time to do it you can quickly redo it or moving to the medium fidelity prototype learning something from the previous level of prototyping mm -hmm. so that's why we at the beginning of the course we said let's try to do circle prototyping is like in a loop because you do a low fidelity prototype you learn what you have to learn and then you move to the medium fidelity you learn what you have to do and then move to the high fidelity and then at a certain point you will also reach out to the final product to the things you really want to to do uh, this is an example of a low fidelity prototype from this course a couple of years ago hmm? so characteristic of this Which are the characteristics of this picture? So can you tell which device is this application for? It's for a mobile phone, yes. And this is paper. It's not a real phone, it's just paper. Uh, and the characteristics, the main ones are written in the slide. So it layouts the main information the interaction and the design choice and with a lot of missing details what is missing in this picture colors, colors. then visual. visual design entirely then Tracks. the what Tracks. well you we you you can interact with it uh, we will see how in a while then the calendar then like size of the buttons are accurate for instance no next is bigger than previous then it's more or less like uh add uh is these these necessarily smaller than these or 
it doesn't matter in a low fidelity prototype. It doesn't matter. Uh, which is the description of task one? <coughs> which is the description of task one? We don't know. We know that there is an area that should also a description. But we don't know exactly which is the description. Because again, many missing details. These are details. That is an area of writing, some description. That's the idea. There, there should be the description. But what is the description? Exactly, we don't know. Uh, we know that here there is a date and a calendar that will open. Uh, we know that is practical. That is probably a category, practical versus theoretical. We know that there is task, because it's task one. So potentially more than one. We know that we can probably mark the task as complete, because there is this checkbox. And, and we know that it's for mobile. And we can evaluate the layout, uh, how many things we can put in a screen. In this case, in, this, in the case of this page, two. Uh, and how things appear, and which are the buttons, and which are the things we can do. Mm? So in this case, adding, previews, and next. Um, the high fidelity prototype of the same interface. This is the high fidelity prototype of that same interface that same application it looks like the final thing the final product there are colors there is layout there is interactivity there is button that works so this is not the same page uh, but the same application so your colleagues several years ago, moved from this, this was one page of their paper prototype, to the implemented version of the interface in this high fidelity prototype in code. And you see here, you have more or less the same idea of layout. You have these blocks here, you have a bar on the top, etc and you still have the bar on the top and you have still blocks of objects it's not a single task with a description here is the like daily view and here you can also understand a little bit better in this page but also in the other one if the uh if if i have took the same page which is the purpose the goal the topic of this application which is Is a task list for grocery shopping? No. For what? Not course progress management, but for my task. Today I want to do chapter one of web application one. And then I can mark it as a complete or not. And I also want to redo tab lab one of the same course and I did it. I redid the lab with success and also want to redo lab two of the same course. But I didn't yet complete the task. So what is this? A task management for students in a course, hmm? in, for their courses, in this case, was about um, some polytechnic course as case study, as examples of content for an application, okay? But they move from here to here. Mm. This is the high fidelity prototype. This is the low fidelity prototype. And we will start from here. Mm. And of course, as you can see, you can learn diff different things. Here, you can learn about colors, small usability details, uh, if the interaction is quick enough, etc., here you cannot. And it's, it's fine because the low fidelity prototype, as we were saying before, is all about the general user interaction, the general layout, how things are placed in the screen, how you move from one page to another, which buttons are available, etc. Um, so th these slides have a quite of characteristics of different kind of prototypes. 
that are purpose, coverage, fidelity, we've already seen, durability, usage, and functional completeness. Um, so the purpose of a prototype is to evaluate a, um, the role of something in the user life. That's the general purpose. And for any prototype. Mm -hmm. And we want to evaluate interaction modality with a prototype, and we also want to evaluate any specific technical aspects of the product realization before realizing it. Mm -hmm. Again, think about the Palmar in the other page, the Palm Pilot, and here you can say how many technical aspects you can evaluate from the paper prototype, again, like the weight, the, the, how, how long it should last in, in the day, it should be eight hours, it should be multiple days between recharging, that should be something that people can tell you according to their usage of the fake prototype. Mm -hmm. uh, already, some of the things in the low fidelity. And the purpose could be, for a prototype, could be, again, depends on the level of fidelity, it could be an expert analysis. We will do an expert analysis. The heuristic evaluation is an expert critique on your paper prototype. Uh, you can check with design rules and guidelines, like the one we have seen last week. Uh, and according again to the fidelity, you can involve users in some experiment to try different versions of the prototype to understand if the usability is good and how, how well is the usability. You can also have it with people in the wild in their day, like use this for one week and then tell me how it's going, etc. Uh, prototypes can also have different uh, durability. Uh, durability refer to the explorability. Some are throwaway prototypes, like paper prototypes. It's not something that you build on them because they are made on paper. You are not bringing code in the paper, but you are redo them in a different level of prototyping. But they are useful for, again, getting something clear at the beginning. And you can use to validate the prototype to validate a specific requirement. And uh, you can also have uh, an operational durability that is an iterative prototype, especially high fidelity, that progressively is refined until it becomes the final product, becomes the final system. And this can be easily done, for instance, in code. If you do an high fidelity prototype in code, that could be refined until it becomes totally true, totally functional and operational in, uh, uh, in the prototype, like an incremental prototype. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are coverage. It could be a local, global coverage to, to cover as many aspects as possible of the system functionality or just local to understand some specific aspects, only some specific page, and only some specific functionality. And you don't want the full picture, you want just a slice of the full picture. And similarly, functional completeness could be horizontal completeness. So it's something that is, should function very well or quite well in all the characteristic of the system or just vertical, maybe it's just three pages. It's maybe just a slice of the entire application that in that moment, works well or diagonal that try to mix a little bit of the two of the two, of two areas and then again fidelity we already mentioned low high and in the middle there is medium and also the usage could be static usage like the palm pilot in wood uh, dynamic not yet interactive but you can still add some dynamism uh, to the to the prototype or interactive in which you can actually interact with the with the prototype and we will see um, how to interact with paper prototypes how we can do an approximate interaction with paper prototypes mm -hmm. and again here is an example of the get the same application the same page into different level of fidelity the low fidelity and the high fidelity mm -hmm. again in this case is actually the same page but you even if you have, have never seen this one Looking at the low fidelity prototypes, you can understand what's the purpose of that page, hmm? which is which is the purpose of this page. It is a setup page for Windows application for setup the printer page, and you can see in the 
low fidelity prototype that there are four tabs and here we have the enable one that is paper size and so here you can imagine mapping the uh, mental model of the user with the system model that here you have all the information about the sizing of the paper so i should be able to select if it's an a4 a3 a letter and the width the orientation is portrait or layout and they also have a preview that show me how things change when i change selection and notice this i don't know if you you see this do you see this what is this yes it's yes this is a ready button but this black one is a sticker it's a piece of paper on top so this is one way we are we're going to see a video this is one way how to have interactivity in paper prototypes you have a page you have small pieces of um, paper and you can move those pieces of paper and according to the movement of those pieces of paper you select or deselect items you change page you create animation even on paper so you simulate interactivity on a paper prototype with a lot of pieces of papers yes In general or in the course? Uh, both of them. <laughs> so, in the course, well, we, you, you will get feedback on the paper prototype and you will build up with, with us in the lab, so that's um, already some, some way. Uh, you should build the paper prototypes keeping in mind the design principle we mentioned last week so that you build up in the right way um, and always for the course. And also looking at the three tasks you're going to, to create. So we are going to ask you to create a paper prototype for fulfilling those three tasks and not anything else. In general, again, you are in a cycle of prototyping. So you do the paper prototype. When you are satisfied, you can check, that, check it with design principle, with guidelines, with specifics of the application, the system you are in. If it's a desktop or it's a mobile, it's, it, things are different, of course. And then you can do an heuristic, some kind of evaluations on the prototype to get information on the quality of the prototype. And we will do, you will do on your prototype, well, other groups will do on your prototype, uh, an heuristic evaluation. That is an expert evaluation to say which are the things that doesn't work. Or you can do a usability evaluation even on a paper prototype and we will cover usability evaluation. So you will need a stage of evaluation in some way. Mm -hmm. It could be evaluation against some principle, uh, that is the heuristic evaluation, or an evaluation uh, with your target users. And then you could be, of course, your internal evaluation, that is, I'm checking this against the design principle, against some guidelines, against some best practice on the platform I'm designing for. Okay? So, paper prototypes is not, we, we already said, um, quite a lot of things. So, low-fidelity prototypes or paper prototypes are and drawn mock-up of the user interface usually on multiple sheet of paper of varying size and characteristics is end drawn so you have to do it by hand you cannot use any software and it's black and white no colors are allowed hmm? so here this picture show paper prototypes in low fidelity and uh, let's say medium fidelity with colors, etc. Mm -hmm. So we are focusing on the low fidelity paper prototypes, not on the realistic one. Uh, key feature is interactive. So you have sketches of screen appearance and then you can have paper pieces that are just the window or a menu or a dialogue or a checkbox that is selected or not. When you want to use it, the interaction with a paper prototype is natural. When you want to click, you just have to point with your finger, and that's the click. And when you want to write, when you want to type something, if you have a text field, you have to write in natural language hmm? uh, with a pen. 
and how do you operate a paper prototype a low fidelity prototype uh, if you want to test it so let's say that we have a paper prototype on the table and i want him to try it and since he needs to try it i'm simulating the computer operation hmm? so you have a piece of paper he clicks somewhere for changing page and i will simulate the computer that is i will bring in a new piece of paper on top of what the person is doing and then if the person is clicking a button i will simulate with another piece of paper a full page a small portion of page it depends the behavior the expected behavior of the implemented application of the of the computer in a way hmm? so the person that simulates the computer operation puts down and picks up pieces of paper to simulate the behavior and provide the responses that should appear on screen in case of errors in case of messaging etc and it can also describe the fact that are impossible or very hard to show on paper like if there is some sound or there is some vocal answer in that case a paper prototype especially the low fidelity one is low fidelity in the look and feel of course it's black and white no well done measurement or end drawn so imprecise by nature but it's high fidelity in depth because it's the person that operate as a computer that simulate the logic behind the computer so you can made a paper prototype interactive thanks to person that move pieces of paper around uh, what's needed to do a paper prototype it's kindergarten level stuff you don't need a degree in computer engineer or any engineer or anything not even a high school diploma to do this you need papers you need pens pencil maybe some post-it you have uh, scotch you can have photocopies if you have the same elements to be repeated multiple times instead of drawing the same window five times you just draw once and then duplicate other four times uh, and that's what you need to do a paper prototype no specific knowledge are needed why paper prototype is of course fast drawing an interface of a screen in, on paper is a matter of seconds to draw it the first time then maybe you need to refine but still matter of seconds so sketching is faster than using any software tool including programming it is easier to change if it's done with a pen or a pencil you just delete it and redo it on the fly even if needed uh, there is no investment of code for instance everything can be th thrown away except the design that you will replicate on a higher fidelity uh, the paper prototype a low fidelity prototype has a characteristic that focuses the attention on the big picture and not on discussion about i don't like the color that you selected first the big picture first the general interactivity first the general behavior of the application and then in medium fidelity prototypes or knife fidelity prototypes the colors the pixel distance between one element and the others etc hmm? so designer don't need to waste time on details in this phase and the people that needs to to use it are actually more creative in the suggestion because they don't focus on they cannot focus on i don't like the font or there is not a lot of contrast between the foreground and the background or the palette is not the company one or other small details because there is nothing here is written on paper is unmade so there is nothing to nitpick and again non-programmers can help because again only kindergarten skills are required and these are example of paper prototypes hmm? uh, these are paper prototypes of the same prototype screens of the same prototype and in this case this uh, team also created um, the container so they want it to look like a tablet and they just draw a tablet and they and you can fill in the paper prototype in it and this is again an example of this course uh, of a mobile application and you can see it's a mobile application either from the general layout and also from the form size 
that is the one of a mobile application and these other pieces are the elements that becomes interactive or should be replaced without changing the full uh, content of the screen uh, this is another example so paper prototype see there is no need to be extremely precise you just need to understand what's about and which are the elements on the screen and how many they are mm? you don't have pictures you don't have any of any of this mm? it's low fidelity in the look and feel uh, even this is a nice example even uh, Microsoft um, for the tab bar of the Windows terminal started with a sort of paper prototype before implementing they draw it how the bar should be and then they noted other things so that they can get feedback from colleagues in a quicker way than implementing and then redo the implementation if something is not working this is way faster and cheaper than writing code uh, and here I show you this video how to create flows how to create interactivity with paper prototypes you see the person press and the computer provide a new screen this was an expand so the paper expand you click somewhere and a new portion of the screen appear and according to the action something happens so in this case it is an attachment so there is more more space for attachment and then you select I don't know what's the type and you select the type and then the window disappear and then you send the email and the mail is go away because it's closed and then you click on it and then a new piece of paper appears and you get the idea so this is how you simulate flow and interaction. This is uh, with animation in a way, so things expand or not expand and collapse, but you can also avoid expansion and you can just provide a new um, piece of paper. But that's allow you to test entirely an application. You of course cannot understand if timing is appropriate or not because it's the human timing of bringing a piece of paper or not and similarly you cannot understand but I think this is in the next slide uh, after you cannot understand for instance uh, if a small detail the change that small change is noticeable enough because in a paper prototype all changes are noticeable because there will be someone putting your hand in front of your eyes and doing something so every change is noticeable even the smallest one while in the higher fidelity that's not it's not the case mm -hmm. so there are again some things you can you can learn or and other things you cannot uh, if you want to have uh, dynamic screens these are this is an example like scrolling mm -hmm. you just have to put multiple pieces of paper together and then pull or push the paper according to what you need to to show and the person that is testing the prototype is only seeing the um, the, the mobile phone in this case container mm? and all this part will be hidden but you know that you can pull this a little bit and the next page will appear mm? so this is also a way to do dynamic screen based on scrolling uh, vertical or horizontal this is for a smartwatch mm? where you can scroll um, vertically instead how to test a paper prototype you will need to test a paper prototype uh, at a certain point so everybody in the group uh, in the design team will need to cover this role so you will need a computer mm, someone that simulate the prototypes move uh, the piece of paper around as as the computer this person doesn't talk this person just does thing as a computer would do it's not giving feedback it's not correcting the person it's just doing action as a logic of the application will do then you have the facilitator that is actually the one that is doing that is managing the the test so present the interface so this interface this application is for booking trips is for whatever and sometimes encourage people to think aloud by asking questions so the tester can speak and say okay now i'm going to click here this is called think aloud whatever is done by thinking is made aloud so by speaking 
and keep the user test from getting off track. And then there is observer, like in the observation, in the interview, someone that takes notes. That is silent, as the computer it is, typically, and takes notes on what happens. Mm? These are, in general, the three main roles that you can have in a paper prototype. You can also have two of them, if there is not a lot of people available, just a facilitator and the computer. But of course, you need the computer, and because otherwise, the paper prototype doesn't work and you need the facilitator to facilitate the session of testing and keep the tests running on track. Um, with the risk evaluation will be slightly different, but still you need the computer and you will need a facilitator. What you can learn from a paper prototype, from low fidelity prototypes? You can learn the conceptual model of the application. Mm? Like the button of the elevator is something that is mapping with the conceptual model in the head of the person and on the paper or not. So user understand it or not. You can learn about functionality. There is any missing functionality, any redundant functionality, any hard to find functionality. That's something you can learn about. You can learn about navigation, the flow that connects various tasks within the application because everything is there. You can learn about terminology. Are the labels understandable for your target population or not? And you can learn about the screen content, about the elements I put in the screen are enough, is too crowded, is too dense, is too sparse, etc. Of course, you cannot learn about the, the look. You cannot learn about the color, the font, the white space, the uh, pixel between one button and the others, etc. Uh, you can not learn about efficiency issues because it's operated by a person with time of a person that is also a uh, response size. Uh, as we're saying, you um, cannot learn if small changes are noticed because even a small change, it is maybe a small button to change text, will be a huge change because there will be someone bringing in front of you a new piece of paper. So that will be noticed. Uh, and you cannot learn the way in which people operate with a paper prototype. It's more exploring or more deliberate usage. Uh, and typically with low fidelity prototype and paper prototype, people are more deliberate in paper prototype and they don't explore randomly. Mm -hmm. And again, user be, uh, heuristic evaluation will partially take all this because that's an expert evaluation, so someone needs to explore everything to understand that everything is working, is working properly. But if you test it with your target population, with a target user, then they will try to be more deliberate and go through a specific path of not exploring the various pages with a paper prototype with respect to a higher fidelity prototype. And here there are some other references about prototyping in general and um, paper prototype in particular. And this closes the lecture about prototypes. Let me use five minutes to present assignment two.